Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. So let's get started with the very first question. And just to let you guys know, this question is a three-part question. Uh, and I wrote quite a bit of notes on it. So if I keep looking down, it's because I want to refer to my notes and I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay. So like I said, starting with the very first question from Creative Healing. Uh, first one, I know how much of a history buff you are. And I was wondering what was the classical LV bag that women bought in the 1930s and the 1940s and what sizing canvas was popular? Uh, question number two, Louis Vuitton first originally designed Damier Ben and his son was the one who designed the monogram canvas print much later. Is this true? Three, an LV the sales associate said that the, that Coco Chanel had a Louis Vuitton bag in the size in the Alma MM size before she designed bags for herself. Is this true? Okay, so let's start with the very first one. What classic LV bag was the one that women purchased in the 1930s and 1940s? What size and canvas was popular? As far as size, I don't know, um, but I can tell you the canvas was uh, the monogram and the Damier Ben. And as far as the bag goes, the very first bag that was introduced was actually the Noe bag in 1932. And uh, it really, it technically wasn't a purse because it was, it was more so used to transport champagne and wine on voyages. So uh, it wasn't until uh, later, uh, like mid-1930s, that the Speedy bag and the Alma bag were introduced. And both of those bags were extremely popular popular when they came out and women just, ex I mean, they flocked to these bags. So those are the two most popular bags from the 1930s and the 1940s. Uh, okay. So that's the first question. And the second question was Louis Vuitton first originally designed it. Did his son design it, the mon monogram canvas much later? Yes. Uh, Louis Vuitton designed the Damier Ben in 1888. Uh, and it was actually after, I believe it was five or six different prints uh, or patterns that he had uh, created because he had a lot of people actually, even way back when, uh, trying to imitate his... Uh, his designs. So in 1888, he created Demi Ben, and that actually put somewhat of a stop to it. A lot of people had a harder time uh, replicating uh, the design. And unfortunately, in 1892, Louis Vuitton passed. So he passed his company to his son, Georges Vuitton. And in 1896, the monogram canvas was created by his son, uh, Georges Vuitton. And uh, he also uh, he also had patents that, to go with it so as to keep away all the people that were trying to before because his father had so such a hard time making sure that people didn't steal his designs and replicate them. So he created patents with, uh, with the monogram canvas, his son did. And um, this included the quatrefoles and the flowers that are on the LV monogram also on the outside of the bag. Uh, and a lot of that was from, a lot of the influence was from the uh, the Japanese and Oriental designs from the late Victorian era. And it was absolutely, it, it seemed to have worked because a lot of people weren't replicating it. It was extremely difficult for people to do that. But now, obviously, fast forward to where we are now, it's still, I mean, even way back when in 1888, Louis Vuitton had a hard time keeping people from not copying his designs and fast forward to the present it's it's amazing how much uh how much has not changed people are still trying to replicate the quality the style and the patterns that is louis vuitton um and also in um in 1959 the monogram print was reintroduced and the canvas was made much softer and they were able to add uh, a lot more bags and a lot more slgs so it became more so of a a, um, of a luxury brand as far as for, for females or, or for men uh, versus it just being strictly luggage. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then to answer your third question uh, about Coco Chanel having a Louis Vuitton bag. And yes, she did. She had the Alma bag. And uh, the like I said, the Alma bag was introduced in, 19, in, in the 1930s. And uh, believe it or not, Gabrielle Coco Chanel had dreamt of making her bag uh, in the early, and I wrote it down uh, so as to not forget. 
she actually dreamt about doing the the Chanel flap, the classic flap, in the early 1920s. But is it? But it wasn't introduced until obviously. February of 1955. That's why it's referred to as the 2.55 bag because it was February of 1955 that it was introduced to the public when it first became available. Uh, but the reason why uh, why Coco Chanel really liked for really liked the Alma bag was because she saw how classy it was and it was very structured yet extremely fashionable. So people refer to Coco Chanel. Um, they say that the Alma is to Coco Chanel as to the Speedy to Audrey Hepburn, because obviously Audrey Hepburn, she carried the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 and she made that bag a huge icon, obviously because she was extremely famous and, um, it was a, a little bit of both, uh, both worlds between both ladies. Uh, and then one more thing I wanted to tell you guys, was the reason why Coco Chanel, <laughs> which is crazy, the reason why Coco Chanel uh, dreamt of her bag, the classic Chanel flap, was because she did not like the fact that she had to carry the bag um, in her hand. She got very tired of carrying the bag that way. So when she thought of her bag, she wanted to make sure that you can carry it on your shoulder so it could be added comfort for uh, and still be fashionable. So how crazy is that? She loved the Alma bag. She thought it was very sophisticated, very fashionable, very chic, very, very Coco Chanel. Uh, and that, <laughs> even though the Alma is obviously a handheld bag, the fact that she was able to uh, incorporate her style and now bring us this fabulous Chanel bag that is the classic flap is amazing. That we have two different powerhouses, two different fashion houses that were able to bring us so much to our current uh, everyday life. So, whew, that is a little bit of history on that. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys with that, but I thought that was a great question and hopefully I gave you guys as much information as possible on that. Okay. <laughs> so moving forward, um, from another question from Michelle Wen, do you like the artsy bag in monogram? I just got one as an early Christmas present and I'm not sure how I feel about it. And for those of you that don't know, this is the artsy. Give me one second to bring it up. All right. So there is the artsy. Um, and to be honest, when I first looked at this bag, when I first thought about getting this bag, I wasn't a big fan of it. I don't like the fact that it, it tends to lose its structure. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of structured bags. Uh, I have one or two that aren't structured and it tends to drive me a little bit crazy. But when I first thought about the RC, I would specifically specifically go into the store to purchase this bag. And every time I would end up buying another bag because I thought it was too uncomfortable. The strap for me just kind of hit right underneath my, um, underneath my, my armpit. And it was just extremely, extremely uncomfortable. Uh, but truth be told, the more and more I look at this bag, I want this bag. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this bag. Um, the price tag is a little bit on the higher side that I would want, that I personally would want to pay for a canvas bag. Um, because I think I told you guys before that I have a little, I have like a set limit that I would, that I will spend on a canvas bag. But even though it's a little bit on the, um, on the higher price tag side, I have to say that the microfiber lining on the inside, the simple, I mean, classic look of it, the strap, my goodness, let's talk about the strap for a second. It is braided. It is fabulous. I mean, it is just exquisite. It has almost like a little bag charm on its own hanging there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful bag. So I say, keep it. It's a great bag and you will definitely um, be happy that you kept it. And what's funny is that every time, every time I see that bag in public, my eyes just kind of go, because I'm attracted to the bag. So I don't know. <laughs> I might get it. I might not. But I say keep it because it's a fabulous bag. All right. Um, ba -ba -da -ba. LV Addict, if you're wearing lipstick, I need to know what it is. And in the last couple of videos, um, where did I put it? Oh. In the last couple of videos, I've actually been using this little guy right here. And this is uh, from Tarte, and the color is Generous. And it is the Lip Surgeon's Matte Lip Co uh, lip Tint. And I really like it. Uh, I Sometimes I like a really 
a really dark lip or a very bright lip, but more so I, I tend to go for these little guys and I really like it because it's matte. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I get really nervous when I wear, uh, really bright colors. I think I told you guys in my subby mail video because I'm afraid that it, uh, it will end up on my lip or on my teeth. So, uh, when I wear matte lipstick, it just feels like I'm not wearing anything. These are extremely, um, moisturized and I think they're great. I like the, the subtle color that it gives. So that is what I'm wearing. And I keep forgetting to put it on the description box below what eyeshadows I'm wearing, what nail polish I'm wearing, because I get asked those questions a lot and I, I just forget because I get sidetracked. So please help me remember. <laughs> and I promise moving forward, I will try to put those on there. But if I don't just call me out on it and I'll make sure and put them on there. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Christina Lopez. I have recently been falling in love with the Chanel jumbo double flap. Ah, my one true love bag. <laughs> I wanted to know comfort wise and versatility is the chain comfortable and how much can it hold? Do you find yourself babying it? Um, okay. So comfort wise and versatility. The bag to me is extremely versatile. You can actually carry it, I believe four or five different ways. Um, you can wear it as a, a giant oversized clutch. You can hide the, the chain inside. You can wear it as a long shoulder strap. You can make it a two shoulder strap. You can put it cross body. I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can wear it. Comfort wise, uh, in the past, I told you guys that I used to own Chanel bags. It was never a, um, a classic flap or anything like that. And I was always really I, I was always really worried that the chain would be too heavy. It would be very uncomfortable. And surprisingly, the chain is extremely comfortable for me. I know everybody's different. I've heard some people say that the chain is uncomfortable for them. Uh, but uh, I think it's great. I, it doesn't dig in deep to me or anything like that. Uh, I find that some Louis Vuitton bags that have Vaquetta uh, straps actually hurt my shol shoulder more than the chain from Louis Vuitton. And you wouldn't think that. You'd actually think the opposite because leather's actually softer, obviously softer than, uh, than metal. But um, extremely comfortable. And as far as how much it can hold, it can hold a ton. That's why I purchased the Jumbo because I, I carry seven different essentials ever on my daily basis. And I wanted to make sure that those seven fit in my bag without having to cut anything out. Uh, with the exception of I can't, you can fit a full size wallet, but you can't fit a full size wallet, a mini pochette and a, uh, a cosmetic case altogether. It would make for too bulky of a bag, obviously. Uh, so I tend to, uh, switch out of this, ooh, out of this giant bat or this giant wallet and I will actually use my Chanel card um, card case or a Louis Vuitton zippy coin purse to kind of just minimize the size and be able to fit that much more in there but you can fit a lot and as far as babying it I do not baby it at all uh, that is the main reason why I purchased the caviar leather it's a lot more sturdy it's a lot more durable and uh, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love the look of the lambskin, uh, but I I don't want to freak out too much about <laughs> about the bag. So uh, that's why I got the caviar. So it, it really depends upon uh, what what style or what uh, what leather you get. But if you're very worried about babying and stuff like that, I would stick with the caviar because it would be something that you wouldn't have to worry about too much. Uh, okay. So the next one. Hungarian LV girl. I would like to know if you have any LV bracelets. If you don't, would you consider buying one in the future? I have a dilemma. I don't know if I should sell my Lucket bracelet to buy a Tiffany charm for my toggle bracelet. The LV one has already started losing color. Ooh. Okay. So I do have a uh, Louis Vuitton bracelet and it's actually the spirit bracelet that my husband got for me, uh, for our anniversary. And, um, it has a bit of canvas and it has a little bit of gold tone hardware. And I can totally understand where you're coming from that the, the gold tone hardware is already starting to lose color. Uh, some of these bracelets, especially the locket bracelet will start to chip. Uh, so I say for the price, the amount of money that you're paying for the locket bracelet, um, or that you paid for the locket bracelet, I would say get, uh, to sell it and invest in a, uh, a charm for your Louis Vuitton or for your 
oh my goodness, for your Tiffany charm bracelet or toggle bracelet because uh, even though I like uh, Louis Vuitton and I can appreciate their, their jewelry, I absolutely love Tiffany because I'm obsessed with silver jewelry. Um, so uh, usually, I mean, it's a toss up between gold, gold tone uh, jewelry and just sterling silver. I like it. I like the fact that I don't have to worry too much about it. If it starts to uh, turn color, obviously you just have to clean it with a silver cleaner. Uh, so I would prefer that. I just think it's a lot better. I, because if you keep that locket bracelet and it's already losing color, let's say you give it another four or five months to the point where the color, the gold tone hardware was completely just off of there. It starts to chip or it just, it doesn't look very appealing. Uh, I have a feeling that you probably wouldn't use it. So I say sell it while you can, uh, and put that money towards a charm bracelet or a, a charm for your toggle bracelet. Ha, huh, my gosh, I can't talk. <laughs> uh, but I say, yes, get rid of it. Um, all right. X Gracie, which products do you love from the UK or worldwide? But, oh, sorry, my phone worldwide, but can't find in America. Um, I know that, um, one of my girlfriends actually went to the UK a little while ago and she came back with three different, um, nail polish brands that I have never heard of. And one of them, I, I believe I can get online, but the price, the shipping is extremely, uh, extremely high to be able to ship to the U S and that was Rococo models own. And what was the other one? Oh, Barry M. She said they have like like three or 200 or I mean, just a crazy amount of different colors that you can choose from. Uh, and one of them, I think it's the Berry M. She said that it was a little bit on the less expensive side, but my goodness, they, her nails always look fabulous when she wears those colors. Ow. <laughs> and, uh, what else? There was also, oh, Flake Away Body Scrub. She also had that, and she gave me a little bit of it. Oh, my goodness. I am in love. <laughs> uh, and then I'd have to say another thing would be, hands down, British tea. Uh, how can I how can I compare our teas to British teas? I can't. I'm sorry. I cannot. I cannot. I'm a huge tea fan, and I would love to be able to find a tea that that the UK has that is just, I mean, will just completely blow my socks off. <laughs> uh, so I would have to say the, the British teas. Uh, and as far as stores, obviously Primark in the UK. Uh, I can't, I can't even imagine how many, how much, how much you can get there, the goodies that you can get. I always see my girl, uh, someday shabby going to Primark and she has these hauls and they just have the cutest stuff. And also my girl Rel Relcords from Australia, when she uh, goes to Mimco, obviously she sent me some goodies from Mimco. So I'm a huge, huge fan of both of those stores and I wish we had them here in the US. I can't even imagine. Uh, but those are a few items. All right, uh, Marlene Perez. I just spoke with someone here in New York City, and she says she doesn't know when, but that Louis Vuitton will be making all of their canvas bags in the U.S. Is this true? Oh, man. Okay, so I don't know. I actually tried to get a hold of my essay, but she's on vacation. And uh, that is... I don't... <laughs> for, for us LV addicts who are made in France snobs, or made in France, because I am, I, I have to say, I've said it before, I'm a huge fan of the made in France, uh, but that's kind of disconcerting. That's going to be quite a problem for us to be able to purchase canvas bags in the future. I don't know if that would be true. That would be crazy. But also at the same time, I can understand it because of uh, maybe because of supply and demand. I don't know. I will try to find out a little bit more. I will do my research on it and I will let you guys know uh, as soon as I hear a word. But that would be a very cold sad day when that happens. Um, all right. Um, Carla Luis Cabrejos. Uh, have you seen the new LV tribal SLGs? And I don't have a picture to show you guys. Uh, actually, I think I might give me one second. How are you guys doing today? Are you guys having a good day? Cause I'm having a great day. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> Uh, okay. So these are just a few of the card holders right there. Um, and to be honest, I'm not a big fan of them. I don't, I don't know. I it just, 
I tend to stick to classics. I rarely step out of the classics into limited edition or um, things of that nature. So I'm I'm not a big fan of them. Mm -mm. But I I mean I think they're cute, but just not for me. <laughs> uh, all right, and then Emily Goo. I'm deciding between the Brea MM and the new Vernie color Griot. Or to save the money and get a caviar red Chanel boy with gold hardware, old medium. Which would you choose and why? Okay, and I actually have a picture of um, of the bra. Give me just a second. Uh, I'm gonna get the matte little color or the matte things on my iPad so I don't blind you guys. So here is the the Brea, and this is in the color Griot. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show up exactly. It's this very, very deep Bordeaux. I mean, the color is stunning, especially with the gold tone hardware. It looks fabulous. Um, and it actually came out a month after the Cerise was introduced. So it's a great bag. Now, uh, as far as between the two, the Brea MM and the Chanel boy bag, hands down, I would go for the Chanel boy bag because of one major reason. Um, I don't, particularly like the combination of Vaquetta and Vernie. I feel that the Vaquetta takes away from the Vernie because over time the Vaquetta will patina. Obviously it'll oxidize and it'll show age. Whereas the Vernie, depending upon how you care for it, obviously, uh, it will still say, stay very shiny. It will still be very, um, it will just, I, I feel that it'll keep its its presence a lot better than um, than the Vaquetta between those two leathers. And I really do feel that it takes away from it because when, let's say I'm maybe a year, a year and a half in, you know, down the road, I'm not saying that you're, that the people are going to be trashing their bags, not at all, but patina is a natural process. It will happen to the bag. So um, I don't necessarily, necessarily like the fact of how it's going to look later on. If the Vaquetta was to stay this crisp, white Vaquetta, I would say yes. Uh, but if you don't care, I mean, if you don't, um, not care, if you don't, you know, do anything to the bag, then obviously it will patina. And obviously it's a huge difference between the two as far as price tag goes. But I, like I said, I'm not a big fan of combining the Vaquetta and the Vernie. I love Vernie just on its own. Uh, and then the very last question is from, I don't, you know what, to be honest, I don't know if I answered this uh, before or not. I didn't mark it off. Uh, Tiffany Ann, just curious about your thoughts on the surf tote. Let me just show you guys a picture of the surf tote, the Chanel surf tote. All right. So here it is. And it comes with a, uh, with a longer crossbody strap. And it's just a very, very simple black bag. And uh, obviously, or you can get it in gold tone hardware and silver tone hardware. And um, I have to tell you guys, as much as I like the Chanel boy bag, um, I, could told, I, I, I don't really go for it because there's something holding me back. But the surf tote, I absolutely love that bag. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's very simple. It's extremely classic. Uh, I really like the fact that it has the uh, detachable uh, you know, compartment on the inside. And, uh, it reminds me of a, a coach bag that I had a long time ago. And I loved that coach bag. I thought it was very comfortable. Uh, but the only thing that holds me back from the surf toe is the fact that a lot of people talk about the corners that it tends to, even though it's a structured bag, it tends to lose its structure on the sides. So it'll start to sag. So that kind of deters me from purchasing the bag. Uh, but I really, really like it. I think I like the surf tote more so than the Chanel boy bag. Uh, I just, like I told you guys, I tend to stick with classics and with very simplistic designs. And I think this, that the surf tote just absolutely exudes, um, fabulousness. I've said that before, <laughs> uh, but it's a great bag and it's got a great, a great price point as far as Chanel goes. So I, I really do like it. It's, it's been on my radar for quite a little while. <laughs> 
uh, okay. So anyways, that is all I, all the questions I have. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I didn't bore you guys. I'm at 24 minutes. I tried to make it a little bit longer than last time. Uh, but, um, just yes, go ahead and leave me your questions and your comments down below. If you liked the video, give it a huge thumbs up. And also I just want to let you guys know that tomorrow I will be announcing the winner of the $500 Louis Vuitton gift card. <laughs> I'm so excited to announce it. Okay, so anyways, that's all I have for you guys, and I will see you later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.